Howdies and salutations, y'all. Hope y'all are having a good evening and maybe staying awake. I know I'm trying to, and I'm sure if anyone's watching the VODs of this, you've realized I talk about being tired constantly. Not the streaming's fault. It's all the other stuff's fault that I do besides streaming. Like, um, I can't really blame having a job. Like, I, I, if I went to bed on time, having to wake up early wouldn't be an issue. But, um, well, you, y'all probably know how it is. Trying to do all the different things one can do. Never enough time in the day or night to sleep. That said, the resolution to try to finish out the rest of a sketchbook that has, I want to say, 33 pages left before the year ends in about 39 days, um, probably not helping. Probably not helping. But that's neither here nor there. And I have no regrets because that's been a wonderful time. So, back to Ishtar Gate Chaos and meandering. You can see we've got a very dumb graph over there <laughs> because we've got the Pratt fault. Now, a bit of backstory. Yesterday I saved this and turned off, but I noticed there was like a little zero in this list. There was a little zero next to Pratt fault. I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then I was like, wait, I need to get a screenshot for my thumbnail. So I reopened, <laughs> reopened the program. And Pratfall was gone. So, <laughs> I don't know how I triggered it, um, but apparently there is, after some research on Stack Exchange and Stack Overflow, because of course, um, it turns out there's basically like a fake user mode, which I'm sure has a purpose, but I don't know what it is. Um, and I somehow accidentally triggered it. And if you do that, then it, I guess, doesn't save the thing in fake user mode. I, I don't understand the details. It's one of those things where I'm sure there's actually a really logical reason for it, because you wouldn't bother putting it into this otherwise. It's not like Blender has pranks built in. But I don't actually know the reason, and I somehow hit the hotkey. Um, so no, before you're wondering, no, I did not rebuild this from scratch. Um, that would really, I'd be really tired if I had to do that. No, it turns out there is a way to sort of restore last session in Blender, so I just didn't save once I opened and realized it was missing. And closed it, didn't save, was able to restore last session. So we're good to go, it's back. But just thought y'all ought to have the backstory on everything. Blender, just when you say that you're completely confident on it, it finds another curveball. Um, but that's okie dokie. Let's see. Let's see, I think I've got a shading tab somewhere. Oh! This is such a dumb motion path. <laughs> I love it, but it is so dumb. Anyway, the main one that I'm going to be trying to focus on for probably the rest of our month here. If, the others will work with it, but this is the one that I want to plan around because it's actually the motion... Kind of like a trudgy, sneak, whatever you want to call it. It's at least a walk. Then again, there is no design denying. Why does Pratt Hall fall have the zero again? Hmm. Last time, when I, it was, I thought it was because I went into modeling mode. And then when I came back, but that would be a really weird problem to have. Okay. Um, maybe the zero isn't the thing. I have no idea. I'm really confused. I need to do more research into what caused that. <laughs> but at least we know how to fix it. So. Okay, the other one I love is is skipping. Um, it's, it'd be harder to animate a setting around because that's, it has this moment where it's waiting on the ground. But I just I love it so much. It doesn't even need to look like it's moving forward. It's just having a grand old time. Anyway, I'm actually going to close Blender, just in case that thing we saw was important. Never mind the chaos of the desktop. Let, let's make Blender not full screen so y'all can see the like sections we're actually working with and all that da jazz, not dads. Um, oh, speaking of, I... Uh, Need to kick off the internal, let the folks know I'm streaming. 
Let's see. That's on there. Let's see. You can probably set this to 115. There we go. Okay, well, that's close enough. Um, the neat little widget. Um, I'll have to show you all sometime, but not right away. Um, yes. So other things I've been doing besides this is crash coursing the last little bit of the donut tutorial, specifically the shading and lighting video, um, because I realized I never actually checked that one. Interesting. Um, well, that just folds away. But yeah, no, I never actually watched that one because I didn't bother with the um, with the uh, well, I I watched the animation video and was like, you know, I kind of want to figure that one out myself. Um, I, I did use the graph editor advice. I wasn't really interested in the sprinkle particle effects for the time being, or like posting and compositing. We'll get there, maybe later this month. We're again, I didn't think we'd get anywhere close. That truthfully. Um, <laughs> I figured this was either going to be like crazy easy and go by in a week, or it was going to take like five months. So I'm quite happy with this, actually. Um, but it means that for the time being, we're going to use Sneak, and we need to actually keep moving with what we're doing. And I'll try to actually watch those videos before the next one, which again, next stream, not Thursday. We're not doing that. I know that would be kind of our usual, but uh, it's a holiday here. And as is probably obvious, catching up on sleep is something I should actually do. And if the work's going to give me the opportunity, then I need to take... It's a rare shot. So, we will be streaming after today. The next one will be on Monday, November 28th, or possibly in the morning of the 29th, depending on your time zone. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess the 29th is when that Dragalia game my friends like is going to get... Um, I guess discontinued? That's a shame. I don't know much about it, but they really enjoyed it, so I'm sorry to see it go. Um, as one, as my friend put it, um, I am hoping that he doesn't get overlorded, because <laughs> he will be playing to the last minute. It is weird how many shows have the premise of a game, like, server shutting down. Like, it's... I get it happens a lot, but is that a common enough phenomena to be, like, universally, or at least, like, commonly, like, sympathized with? I don't know. Hmm. Okay, well, let's, uh, go back to the basics. And I am actually going to follow Blender Guru pretty much to a T on this one because lighting is not something I have a ton of experience with. So yes, I am actually going to do the dreaded two window. I know, I know, it's crazy. We're going to take the bones out for a minute too. This one I want aligned with the camera. Uh-oh. Is this even walking the right way? Okay, cool. So the camera is right, and I just keep orienting wrong or defaulting wrong. That said... The camera's not at the most interesting angle, really. But let's see if we can't fix that a little bit. Lock this to the cursor. Or, no, lock the camera to my view. And then now I can move the camera. Let's just let it play. See, maybe forward, how abouts. See if there's a view that is good. But, like... There. That's not bad. See if we can flip this away for a moment. Apparently I cannot. I, I don't know what I did that I can't close it. <laughs> oh well. Nah, that's good enough. We can at least get the angle. I can try to rule of thirds this like a little bit, but I don't want to lean into it too much because there's really not much anything else in the scene right now. Maybe there will be. It all depends on the t how uh, how much time we have left come next week. And I just realized I have like 
almost no plans for December. <laughs> um, I should probably fix that. Uh, I mean, I know I had an idea of making stickers, but it feels hard to go back to 2D drawing after this. Eh, uh, we'll see. I want to keep fresh. I may... I may invest in a new tablet at some point soon. We'll see. This one's been really good. But there's just one specific feature, and I'm just, for the record, I've got the, like, Wacom, Wacom, Intuos, like, the, the basic one. Not, like, the beginner super basic one, but, like, their default one, which is good. It's been good. It's, like, 6 by 7 inches or something. Um, I've had it for years. It's had no issues. Um, but the one, the one thing it can't do that I think would make digital art feel more like sketching in a way that I would actually enjoy um, is it can't detect tilt. It does pressure, and pressure's great, but like when I'm drawing with a pencil, and I just realized this recently, I'm not shading with pressure much. I'm shading with, well, I mean, it's an important part of it, but the tilt is way more a part of it. Um, like it just, it matters so much more. And whether I'm getting, like, the edge of the pencil or the point of it, it's, yeah. And I don't know how I'm going to be able to simulate that. Maybe I need, like, two, like, sharp pencil and smooth, like, blunt pencil. But even then, like, I think the tilt is still important. It's, I, I don't know. It, there's, there's, there's options out there that do tilt that are kind of in the same price range as this one. Um, and I think I may have to give one of those a shot. But we'll see. That's not a right now thing, and in any case, it's not extraordinarily helpful for Blender regardless. Not neither of them would be. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I kind of like this camera view for now. I feel like, well, the lift, the lift doesn't show super well. Maybe like down a little more. Or like a dramatic up view. Uh, the warping of this side just, I, I I couldn't, I remember I was trying to loop cut it, and I couldn't quite get that one to do it. Um, and that warping is just not quite, hmm, it looks really jarring from this, I mean it looks kind of jarring from any angle, but it's a lot less jarring from above. So yeah, let's just... Let's do it where it looks like it's doing a 45 degree angle to the screen, like meandering through. And we'll exit at kind of like the other point. So for those, I've, I've talked about rule of thirds a little bit, and I do, like, I'm just thinking of it in the super basics. But the idea is that if you want sort of the composition or layout, there's more to composition than layout, but the, it's the, the layout's the big part of it. Um, if you want it to look good in a scene, then you really ought to align the key things along certain specific places in the photo. And the idea is basically that if you subdivide the screen into thirds, horizontally and vertically, so if you had a line across here and one down here, and then vertically one here and one here, roughly, I mean, I'm just, oh yeah, I could, you know, like that, 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 you know, but like not terrible, like actually thinking about it and not eyeballing with a mouse cursor. Um, then you should put important things along those lines, and really important things should be where they intersect, because it's, I, I don't know if it's where the eye is drawn. I think the main thing is that when something is in the dead center, it commands focus. Um, but if you want something that's a little bit more of a natural scene, or like more of a, like, casual scene, like this obviously commands focus well enough on its own. I don't need it to be marching down at the user. I want it to be like, oh, look at that quirky little gate meandering over there in the distance. Um, I just want it to, like, I still want it to be framed in the scene where people notice it, but not, like, dominating it aggressively. It's sort of like being in a photo, like, with your family, versus, like, shoving your face two inches from the lens. Um, that's an exaggeration. But the point is, I'm trying to align, like, the main undercurve of the arch with the place I would expect to matter for rule of thirds a little bit. Um, just, just eyeballing it. So, now that we've got this, I'm going to unlock the camera from my view. So you can see we're not in the camera anymore. It's going to stay over there. If we go to the camera view, then it's like this. And that's what we want. Um, hmm, I can't seem to get any of that to go away. I just sworn I used to be able to. 
Oh, neat. Anyway, we'll just leave it on that one and keep a bunch of stuff there. Not really doing any harm. Yeah, it's not in the way even if we really crunch it. Okay. Save. Um, checking the animations. Pratfall, why you like this? Okay, save. No! Okay, I'm going to pause for a second to make sure that I don't lose this. So I'm going to dig into the docs real quick before we jump into the lighting too much. Which, good! It's more time to forget the information before I, uh, from the video I just crunched um, before we do lighting. But I think I've got enough of the basics in mind. There's like four key points. Um, there's a lot more points in the video. It's definitely worth watching the full Blender Guru video. Highly recommend. Great tutorials. Um, but for the purposes at the moment, we're not oh, cheapers. This motion looks so stilted, and it cracks me up every time. The raise up is so jarring, and then this is so, like, not the right pace either, and then it just flumps. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Um, but yes, <laughs> Blender Animation 0 next to Action. Okay, Reddit post. Oh, from this year. Excellent. A couple of my animation actions have a zero in front of the name, and I know the zero will delete them upon closing the file. How do I stop this from happening? Hover over the shield icon next to the name. It should say fake user in the tooltip. Turn that on. Um, Thunder cleans up anything not used in the scene. Oh. Oh! Oh, okay. So everything in the scene has to have, like, a user working with it. Um, and um, basically, this isn't saying that it's made by a fake user. It's saying create a fake user to say that this thing actually matters. Shield. Okay, so the F keeps it safe, I think. I'm saving and hoping for the best. It's like Absol. I thought the F was the curse, but it was actually the save. Um, hmm. I don't know what determines if the animation has a user per se, because I've got or because I've got three actions. Each of these little doodads is called an action, um, and I don't understand why it. Okay, press the shield button for each action. Objects can only use one action at a time for editing, and so the sable. That's just weird, but okay, we're defending them. what the number is but oh crud oh it's a copy huh. and that's a delete oh crikey and now it's got a zero fascinating fascinating how easy those options are to hit <laughs> okay well i feel like i'm confident that we've learned a little bit more about that that's a nice follow-up to the last stream honestly hey Dado, how are you welcome to the chat it's going good. I was just making sure. Apparently, Blender has a little auto cleanup that can delete the animations if you're not careful. Um, I'm sure there's a logic to it, but uh, I don't quite follow it yet. <laughs> Clearly, a lot of animators don't like it, but you know, it could just be a vocal small group on the forums. Hey, you got it working. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's early to judge, but you enjoying it so far? Let's see. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one did you get? Scarlet or Violet?
<laughs> yeah, I always end up binging them. <laughs> Oh, dang, that's quite the deal. Okay, nice. Okay, so based on based on the Blender Guru, I'm trying to do a few things to make this look not terrible. Um, but yeah, no, it's... Oh, man. Pokemon's always... They're just fun games. For better or for worse... Um, they're just fun games. Yeah, I hope I'm doing that right. Well, <laughs> only one way to find out. Oh, actually, it's here. Oh, then I shouldn't have messed with the camera. Okay. Um, hmm. Is it like what? A one? It was a one. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, good. Uh, which, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, which starter did you go for? Because I know people have, a lot of people have strong opinions about the starters. Um, it's always funny to watch those arguments go down. Objects in the scene. Where's our lamp? Like under it, right? Right. Oh, nice. Good choice. Ah, I, I, I've spent a long time basically being a grass type trainer, but it's fun to branch out sometimes. And, um. Oh, yeah. Oh, good luck. Well, you, sh you should be in good standing with Fuikoko. I, I always dread ice gems. As a, again, I usually pick the grass type. And then I would die horribly every time. <laughs> um, I've gotten better at the game since then. <laughs> but, man, early days. Ooh, boy. Hmm. Okay, here's my light. Where is it? Where is it in the scene? be under here somewhere, right? Where's the lamp? Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's fun to swap them out. Arcanine's a fun a fun Pokemon too. Yeah, I uh oh what did I I started with Snivy. That was my first Pokemon back in Gen 5. Good times. But they're all good times. Like, every game offers different things, and they're fun. I see so many people who get so mad if someone says a game later than one of the ones that, that came out for them, like, is good. They're like, no, they've never been good since, insert whichever generation they started. And it's like, guys, chill. <laughs> I haven't gotten it yet. Um, I'm waiting either for, like, Black Friday sales or for... Um, and we'll see, that might be a Christmas thing. A way I can start at the same time as my younger brother. <laughs> see if we both do that. That'd be fun. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I've got a couple of friends who are, like, so into Pokemon that they... I wonder if they still have it. At one point, they had not just the National Dex, but the entire completed Pokedex. Um, they have all... They were, like, crazy, like, good at catching them all. I was never like that. <laughs> okay, light source, where you at? Uh, where did my mesh go? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll have to let y'all know. We we can play sometime or something. Do some trades. Although I always have, I always have the weirdest issues with Switch internet. Like I don't think it plays nice with my router, because I could never like I could sometimes multiplayer on Animal Crossing. People could come to my island, but I couldn't go to theirs. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, just weird. Um, so I'll have to see if I can't fix that. 
But here we go. Um, but where the heck is the light? Why can't I see it? I need to like. Oh, show overlays. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Animal Crossing in particular, I think, had to do some weird things to do all the island hopping. Um, it, it, did you ever play Animal Crossing? It's an, it's an interesting one, I'll say. Whoops, nope, not you. Sorry, bud. This one. A light source. I got fairly far into it, but I eventually burned out just because all of the tasks are so grindy. I was like, I didn't sign up for stinking World of Warcraft. <laughs> I enjoyed it. it. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a fun, cute game. Yeah, it's a fun and cute game. I, I definitely recommend, especially if you like, like s designing your own place and such. Like setting up the house and making the island look like your own. It's It's genuinely enjoyable. But, my word. Oh, that's right, that's right, new Switch. I know they had it on some old consoles, but that was, like, way back when at this point. Okay, let's check out the actual light on our little light source here. Boulder. Oh, well, yeah, sure, but, like, even just, like, in order to, like, the fossil thing, it's like there's four fossil fossils spawn every day, and you've got to, you make sure you show up every day and dig up the fossils and fix your tools and see what the deal of the day is and if you might be able to make some money with the little shop. And then, don't get me started on the stock market, and, like, there, that game has so many mechanics. It's fun. And the problem with Tom Nook is it's easy to get out of debt with him, but he always has a way to get you back into it. One more little carrot to dangle to say, mm, I can take out a bigger loan. He really is like a genuinely terrifying loan shark. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man, that guy. Okay. <sighs> Whew, pardon my yawn. He always gets you. Yeah, that ain't wrong. Okay, this isn't exactly what I want, but I'd like to open a shading view over here. Here we go. Shader editor? No, not the shaders. Not... Mm -hmm. UV compositor? No, not the compositor. Maybe it is the 3D viewport, but then I need to adjust... Oh, yes. No, no, further over. Hiding away. Do, 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 do. Yeah. No, it, it's an adorable little game, though. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, so we need to make this... Interesting. Oh, okay, so yeah, we'll keep the radius... Like that, and the power, we're going to really kick it up a notch. Give it time to render out, because the lighting always takes a little longer to figure out with the cycles renderer. That really accents the geometry on this. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, the gym leaders put up a stinking fight sometimes. You never know. Sometimes they're pushovers, and sometimes, like, it, it really depends game to game, too. Like, sometimes it's just like, oh, yeah, the, the gym leaders in this are easy. And other times you're like, oh, no. <laughs> they are not afraid to de defeat a small child. <laughs> uh, whew. They don't get around. Maybe this is too far away. I <laughs> guess you gotta go train up some more. That, that's how it goes. Let's see, can I do like 50,000 watts? No, not 50 watts. There we go. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's no escape. You've got to... Unfortunately, you got to see it through to the end, but then round two, <laughs> you come back a more powerful trainer each time. Ah, no. Five oh, 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 oh. And this one. Wait, is this the light of my entire scene? This should be the light just of... Oh, right, okay. Let's see, because we got the bright one that's our main light source. We got this kind of dim one that's just doing our nice little backlighting. And then we'll, per the tutorial, in which I actually agree with on this one, because I don't want this to look like some ominous gate marching into the depths of the abyss. Um... At least not without it looking cooler than this. Um, we'll need to set up a rim light. <laughs> it's going to be like far side of it from the camera. Um, and I want it to be pretty sharp, so let's actually make the radius like something crazy. Why? Why does it affect the other ones when I do this? I guess I had both selected because I copied it. Oh! Oh, yeah, 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 no. No, yeah. No, seriously, no shame. Go have fun. <laughs> we may wrap up early tonight, so don't rush back or anything. Like, you know, this is, like, take your time and have a, have a good week. For real, if you, don't, if you don't make it back, have a good week. Oh, this is a fun song. Yeah, yeah, have a good one. Let's see. Heck yeah, spammed in music. Small radius, high power. Bring it in. Okay, so this will mostly be... The problem with the small radius is that it like, definitely makes it reflect in some spots more than others. But I do think that's still giving it a good kick. And hey, if it looks overly backlit, I think that's kind of impressively ominous. So let's see how this looks... Okay, hold on. Um, there's a thing I need to tweak on the renderer. The mode that it's rendering. I don't remember what it was. Ah, yeah. No. Um, then when it's rendering, I want it to render at speed rather than trying to render every frame. It's going to hurt itself trying to do every frame. I mean, my computer will be fine. But, like, it, it's hardy enough to deal with this. But, let's see. <laughs> this is the wrong animation. <laughs> this is the weird floaty one. Oh man, you can see it really trying to render these. Is it like rendering them more on each loop? Or in the getting less grainy? I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, honestly, this is still doing an impressive job as is. Let's, uh. Maybe let's look at the rendering, which is somewhere. Hmm. Is it here? 
I honest to goodness don't know where that was. Hmm. Interesting. Um, uh, where the heck were the render controls? Oh, I think I need to select the camera. Camera object itself. And then, yep, okay, here we go. Was this always here? Yeah, it was. I'm just blind. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's see, actually... I wonder how my computer's doing this right now. Let's crack open the old... Oh, yeah. Spoilers, here's my motherboard. <laughs> or at least the brand of it. Well, ah, there we go. Let me scoot this out of the way for a moment. Ah, <laughs> it got me. Clever, clever computer, you. Well, there ain't any secrets on it. Oh, good. They're still patching this. Um, okay, here we go. Honestly, GPU doing a good job. Yeah, I'm not surprised Blender is using the bulk of that. Um, I mean, I have a power supply, but it probably just doesn't spit out the info here. Oh, it actually. Cool. Nifty. Um, I'm going to kick the AIO up to performance at least. Uh, and that one should be CPU. I wonder which fans I put the fan connectors in. Because um, I genuinely don't want this to overheat. That would be, you know, not good. Temperature. Okay, it's still okay. CPU is fine. Man, this computer runs quiet. Okay, sorry, I'm still excited about it. I built it right before I started streaming, specifically for streaming and Blender. Um, so I'm like, yes, it's working. Um, but I should probably stop just having it render a random walking gateway in the background. There we go, we got ourselves a frame. Frame. Looks interesting. Honestly, like it kind of just looks not bad. Like this lighting, the rim lighting is probably a little harsh, truth be told, and a little not very rimmy. Um, uh, how can we tweak this in a way that will make it look better and not worse? Because it's very bright. Probably too. Let's let's cut down on the brightness a little bit to maybe forty k. Of Warhammer fame. Let's make it bigger so that we're actually hitting a wider part of the back. Bring it down a bit so it's hitting from below. Uh, that really highlights the doorway, which is neat. And I think I want to scoot it like a little bit more. Problem is, it's not like it's curved. It's either going to be visible or not for the most part on this edge. And at some point, it's going to start cutting into this guy's turf down here. I mean, probably should still be... No. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, I'm going to save for now. Okay. Other things to think about on this one. doop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop -a -doop -a What was the other thing? I mean, my, my notes for this stream were camera and lighting. <laughs> Um, <laughs> interesting. I feel like I can put a fairly sizable check mark through those. So let's actually keep moving forward. But, well, let's save. Well, let's put this lovely render view away for now. Not fully away, mind, because I've already forgotten how to do that. Um, camera's over here. I always forget the camera's on the same side as these because they're behind the camera. 
It makes sense if I bother to think about it for more than like a second, but I rarely do. Okay. Ah, uh, heck yeah. Which song is this? Is this in my playlist? It sounds super familiar, but like... Lo-fi video game Twitch music? That's not the playlist I usually play. Did it finish my playlist and move on to the next one? Ha! Or... No. Did they just update? No, it's just going live? Playlist radio? I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the song You Wish, Wish on the Beat. It's quite catchy. However... <laughs> Um, this playlist was made pretty much entirely for the purposes of being... Oh yeah, I forgot to loop it. Fascinating. Point of it is to be non-copyright. Now, that said, I'm getting to the point where I would really like to... Um... Okay, I'm going to set this view to not render so I don't burn up my CPU while we're just chatting here. Wireframe, even. Um, I, I have been talking... I was just thinking, like, yesterday about this, actually... We've been doing this long enough. That was a lovely placeholder. I'd like to get some actual music that I, like, proper like. Like, I don't dislike lo-fi, but I also don't like it. I feel completely neutral towards it. It is... Like, this has nothing to do with the genre. There's a lot of lovely lo-fi out there and a lot of terrible, but, like, it's it's a genre. There's a ton of songs in it. Um, but I think, generally speaking, to me, it has about as much impact as elevator music, which is to say it's excellent in the background, and I definitely prefer having it to having nothing. But, like, it's not what I want to hang out with several hours a day, several days a week. And so I need to figure out... I've, I've found some options I need to dig more into them. Because I know there's good options out there. Um, especially... Especially in the realm of Electro Swig. Which, let me tell you, if I can find a good, like, non-copyright set of Electro Swing, or not, not non-copyright, but where they have the copyright set up such that they're okay with people using it. Because I don't like stealing other people's art, and that's not, like, music is art. Like, I get it. I, I don't like how YouTube enforces their copyright stuff, because it's a bunch of terribly designed bots that fraudsters can use to claim rights. Which is stealing the music, and the profits from it. And the profits from any videos people make. Not that we're making any profits off ours. That's not the point. But the point is, YouTube's enforcement is garbage. Um, however, conceptually, they're not wrong. On that. They're super wrong on a lot of other things. But on that particular point, they're, they're right. The music owner owns the copyright. So I would rather support the musician or play music that they're okay with being played. Um rather than doing any sort of weird nonsense um, that, like, YouTube would get involved or, you know, any of that. Twitch is a lot better about it because it's one-time play, so they're not as worried about, like, multi-repeats being stolen, um, which is a fair risk. I mean, I've seen plenty of videos where there's the official video and then there's the slightly differently named not-official video with three times as many views. So you're like, okay. And... It's, I'm not talking about ones where they, like, build on the meme and it's a parody. I'm talking about ones where it's literally the same video re-uploaded. <laughs> that ain't cool. I, look, I, I grew up as a probably lawful, good, academic kid. I had, cite your dang sources. <laughs> it's etched into my bones. And there it shall lie with a complete bibliography. <laughs> okay. So, but in the meantime, we've got the lo-fi. And again, I've actually been exposed to some fun songs I wouldn't have heard otherwise thanks to this playlist. But I'm also ready to maybe move on to some other stuff. Of course, the music I listen to myself when I'm, like, not streaming is going to be horrendously distracting and not suitable for streams. <laughs> not that it's, like, crass or anything. It's just not focus music. Um... <sighs> Here's the most random mess of songs. It's got like old Minecraft parody songs, it's got internet meme songs, it's also got like lo-fi and electro, like some lo-fi, some electro swing. When I talk lo-fi and that, I mean like snail's house type where it's really distinct. Um, some techno, a little bit of rock, 
a little bit of everything. There's at least some rap song. Like it's just it's 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 um, across genres. I like songs, not genres, except for electro swing. I, I like most electro swing music. <laughs> Although you never know. Like some sometimes you find out there's a whole wing to the genre you didn't even know about. And you're like, oh. Sometimes you're like, oh, this is awesome, and sometimes you're like, oh. Cool, I hope this isn't what people thought I was talking about. <laughs> this is really awful. Electro Swing's been good. Um, so far, but again, a lot of songs out there these days. So let's see, what we were doing was we were actually going to add another object to our scene. That's crazy, isn't it? We're getting a plane. And if I set it to transform mode, Um. Oh, come on. Transform mode. You know. Wow. Does not want to play along with my pun. I was going to say it turns into an aeroplane. But it won't let me move it. Oh. Is it because it's in? Yep. There we go. Frame zero. And all of them. This thing ain't moving. Well, it... Sort of. We'll get to that. There we go. Now it's an aeroplane. Super not worth it. <laughs> anyway. Let's make this reasonable width. Reasonable location. And then a crazy length. And um, then, of course, control A, apply all of those transforms this is what I want it to be in its essence is this so now take a look at that rendered view ah I didn't think about the lights impacting it that's interesting hmm. now the question is what what do I want to do with this I'm thinking well, because I need a texture for it, for starters. And then maybe I can make the texture not be affected by the lights? I'm sure there's a way to do that. I can make it, like, hyper matte or something. Um, anyway, new texture. This will be... Flat texture for platform. And let's, uh... Make this not... Oh, wait. Wait, what the heck? Material. I want the material, not the texture. What am I doing? Okay. New. There we go. Um, flat mat. <laughs> He's my favorite YouTuber. It's Plat Mat of uh, Fame Geary. Okay, base color. Let's do something a little more interesting than this. Let's get ourselves like a nice little golden, like somewhere between the sands and actual gold. Um, just something neat, because the the blue and the gold go really nice together as colors. Um, and then here we go. Um, roughness. That's the opposite. Normally you have glossy in a lot of things, where you're like bigger number is more shine, but with roughness, bigger number is less shine because it's more not shine. I don't think it's gonna let me put a five for roughness. Okay, it is. That's interesting, and it actually has a discernible impact. Okay. 50. Oh, wait, no, that's a specular. Oh, no. Too reflective. Too reflective. 50. <laughs> hmm. 25. 12.5. 6.25. 3.125. I'm turning into Darth Sidious. Anyway, um, so now if we let this run, doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a, but it still looks like it's moonwalking, don't it? So we need to do two things. And because I didn't expect to get to this, this stream, and we should probably mess with the lighting more, like it's not perfect, but I, it's good enough. It's good enough. Um, let me actually do a proper render for the thumbnail. Oh, I like it's kind of casting shadows on the ground. I need something that'll make it clear that 
there is motion happening on this texture. So let's texture paint for this texture. Uh, open. No. I guess I gotta save the material or something. I don't know. In any case, this is texture and not material, so it's still, I don't think, exactly what we want. Um, mirror clone. No, 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 none of these. I mean, we could fill it with white just to see what it's actually doing. It looks like magenta. This is gonna be a hot pink, not magenta. No, there's nothing selected, that's the point. Or it's like so big or so small we can't see it, and it'd be small in this case, I think. Um, object mode, I've selected the thing which has texture, or material. Where's the material editor? Uh, I guess what we really do need is a texture, and this needs a texture on it. Flat text. Um, um, flat text image. Here we go, here we go. We're getting where we need. Child. Um, now can I open flat text image? Yes! Oh no, it too big. Okay, um... Well, that's, I don't know what that's actually going to look like in the render. Because this has, this is the texture though, not the image, so it's still just a flat, um, I think. But let me, is there a line tool on this? That'd be nice. Draw. Well. What? Oh no, what is this? What mysteries have I unearthed? Oh no, it just looks like a terrible MS paintbrush. Let's, okay. Oh, here we go, here's some options. Um, overlay, much smaller radius. Think one. I'm going to put some lines on it. They're not going to be good lines, but they're going to help me figure out what the heck is happening. Okay, so we're not seeing the lines on this as it is textured. Good, and by good I mean bad, but insightful. Huh, preview of it. Oh, jeepers, tiling, not great. I, I may have to do some proper texture research on this one. So, you know what, rather than blindly jumping into this one, when I know roughly what I need to do, and a little bit of time will help me find identify it, let's do a little more tweaking with the lighting. Let's set this back to our nice flat tone, let's set this one back to our nice render, because um, obviously the lighting is not working on our under layer, but that's okay, as long as it's working on everything else. Um, here we can at least... Well, now we're not really getting the... Uh, is it trying to do cycles now? Hmm. If I do EV... Yeah. <laughs> Obviously not quite as good in this case. The shadows get weird. But they're not the worst. And it at least gets me some sense of the lighting. Namely, we have some major dark in there, which is interesting. I don't know if I can adjust a certain light source forward somewhat, perhaps. Hold on, let me make sure I'm grabbing the right one. Yes, yes I am. Like, this one's not as strong as the other one, and it shouldn't be. But at least gets a little more light. Well, it gets us some weird shadows, though. 
like right here. Hmm. I don't want a crazy big lot. Okay, let's. Maybe we bring like a really, really small soft light. Okay, pause the animation. Move the new light. Make sure the old one isn't selected in any way. There we go. Okay, see, I had the little dot in the middle, so it was still selected. Let's put this one here and just above the surface. And let's make it nothing crazy. And let's set this back to cycles, darn it. Because, yeah, right now it's looking heckin' washed out. We don't want that. So which light do we have selected? Let's go to it. Well, it doesn't matter, although it will matter in the long term because these names are bad. Um, let's trim that power down a little bit. Oh, well, let me go more than that at a time. Fine. Power, 3,000 watts. I just want it to be enough to cut out a little bit of those interiors. And radius is going to be like 500. We can make this stronger. Let's scoot it over this way to be more relevant for the camera without fully washing things out. Uh, we're still losing a lot of texture with that. Let's. Okay, hold on. Um... Yeah, like with cycles, this doesn't like there, there's there's a lot of dark there, but it's not horrible. And as it moves, that changes. It's also still the wrong. I'm still using the wrong animation. What am I doing? I even talked about that earlier. Come on, let's do sneak. That's not sneak. Ah. Save. Image can't be saved, no file. Interesting. Interesting. Our animation still here? Okay, good. This is still just jaunt. Sneak. Sneak, darn it. Um Okay. Looks like I'm gonna get to do a little more blender research today after all. And here I thought I was gonna wrap up early. Which we won't. We'll probably just play Stardew Valley. Um or some such. We'll figure something out. Blender. Hmm. Can't change action. Actio. Or can't. Can't switch action. I can't switch between actions. Hmm. NLA animator. A lot of stuff is saying I should try the NLA animator. I need to figure that thing out. Oh, I need to select the armature and then change the action in the action editor now. Okay, I have okay, I have to have it selected. I guess that makes some amount of sense. Let's see. This one looks so funny. I like it. Uh, do ba do 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 do. Well, 
Oops, I just closed the chat. Um, hold on, chat, bear with me. There we go. There we go. Let's see. Oh, there's maybe some real people. I see a couple of the usual bots. That's always neat. Need to figure out how to get rid of those, probably, but that's fine. <laughs> I love that it jumps out of frame. Rendering just that frame would be fun. In fact, um, rendering. Was it Control R? Huh. Shouldn't that have, you know, rendered the camera's view? Or is it F12? There we go. Don't know what Control R was. Hope it was nothing bad. <laughs> oh, the vanishing point on this looks really funny to me. Um, here, let's let's save this image. Um, Ishtar Gate. Let's create a new folder called Renders. Ishtar Renders, because we're at the point now where there might end up being a lot. Jump one. Sure. Modeling, or sorry, layout. Hmm. How to do its thing. I can just do F12 from here, even. <laughs> and look at that. That looks, well, it looks like it's made of cardboard. <laughs> um, actually, hold on. This looks a lot like some old cardboard building blocks I had as a kid. Squat one. OK, let's actually, hold on. Animation, get the armature. Or the arch mature, as I choose to call it. We'll, we'll get some sneak poses. Of course, rendered. Um, if it'll do it. Oh, right. This is the rendered frame. There we go. Dunk. Dunk. Oh yeah, this is fun. Dunk. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, let's let's do a render of this one. Just some fun, some fun stuff. There we go. There we go. About seven seconds per frame. And not bad if we're just going to do a quick GIF of this. Let's see. Tip two, whoop. One. And, and then let's, of course, let's go back and get the silliest of the silly. Dumbest of the dumb. At fall. Oh no. 116 is not a good frame for Pratt Fall. I, I could probably manually fix frame 116, but like. Eh. Oh, jeepers. Whoops. Uh, okay, well. Ah, and getting some texture tearing there. Always a good time. Um, oh, wait. This one, not the full project. Let's... Oh, it looks so kind of sad and pitiful like that. I feel bad. Like not, not bad enough to change the animation because it's so dumb. Oh, that's dramatic. 
You know, it's helpful that this is render button is the same as like um screenshots in Steam. <laughs> I'm just my brain's like, oh screenshot. And I got a real stinking nice screenshot. Behold all my all ye behold my works, all ye mighty in despair as it clips through the ground. <laughs> I'm having too much fun with these. These are silly. Um, let's see. What to do, what to do. Hmm. Tell y'all what, because I, truthfully, the lighting's in an okay place, and it's not, I don't think we're going to be getting it in a better place until we've got, like, the texture of the platform figured out and some other things. Um, so, I don't really want to mess with lighting more right now, and frankly, I need to brush up on textures again. Like, obviously, we've got the pre-made one we got on here, but, like, actually getting, so I'll, I'll lay out sort of what the goal is for this. I want this surface to look not necessarily sandy, but like more like a conveyor belt. And I want to, not moving the, I mean, we'll probably do a small enough set that we could just move the surface along in the background and just make sure its end position of the stripes on this conveyor belt surface are the same as the start and it would loop. But what I really want to do, because I think it would be more useful to learn something, and that is after our, our main, after all, our main goal here. Um, is to see if we can move the projection of the texture along the surface of the object. So the object itself won't move, but the texture on it will be sort of like... I don't know if y'all have, have ever seen those old theater backdrops or like those old like toy paper tables. No, bad description. Table with drawing paper on it and like a spool on each end so you can just like roll the paper along once you finish drawing on one section and like roll it up. They're mainly for, like, kids who have, like, they're playing with crayons, and they're just going to do a lot of drawings. You can just roll the old drawings off the table, new ones roll on, or new fresh paper rolls on. I basically want, well, that's still, like, the table surface doesn't move, but the sort of drawing on it does. Uh, the reason I think of it as a projection here is, uh, the way they describe it is, assuming there were no other objects in the scene, it's like if there was a projector, like, shining the texture on this surface, this flat like golden ground surface here. And so you're projecting the like image you're projecting moves, but the actual backdrop doesn't. That's a better example than the paper table, but hopefully one of those two made sense and the other one didn't screw up the understanding. I always hated that in like school when you you understood it and then someone else doesn't. And so they ask a question and the teacher explains it a different way and suddenly you're like, "Oh, maybe I didn't understand it." And then you understand less than when you started. And I'm not blaming the other student who had questions, or the teacher for that matter. But it's just one of those awarenesses where you're like, oh, maybe I didn't have as good a grasp of this as I thought, and so now neither method makes sense. Or you did have a good enough grasp, but you misunderstand the new one, and so you're like, okay, which is the correct? It happened to be a lot in algebra. Mainly because they had all the different forms for depicting the equation, which there were good reasons to have. But, like, for whatever reason, I couldn't keep them all in my brain at once. It was like, give me slope-intercept form, or give me the other ones. Um, don't mind me. Definitely, totally remember how to do algebra. 100%. I liked calculus better, anyway. And geometry. I like the... Not that algebra isn't visual, but both calculus and geometry, like, somehow in my head, it made sense what they were doing. I was like, okay... These numbers clearly correspond to this thing. Algebra, like, I could get it a little bit. You've got the xy coordinates on the chart, but as soon as you start, like, building out the equations around the x and y, I was like, okay, I sort of follow how these are impacting it. Like, you've got the multiplies and then the pluses for offsets, but then you got into, like, matrices and other stuff, and I was like, okay, I don't understand. Simplifying this equation, none of, none of these phases make any sense in how they relate to the final thing. And my brain would just get all muddled and mush. Had a much better time of calculus. Not better grades in calculus, but I at least enjoyed it, and I feel like I understood the concepts way better. And of course, geometry. I'm, if it's not obvious, I'm like a very visual person. Like I, I'm not gonna pretend that I can just think of something and immediately have the 3D model in my head or anything like that. But like, 
I enjoy figuring out, well, basically the UV mapping. Figuring out how does this 3D thing work? How, how does 2D map to 3D? What's going on with it? It's, it's great for 3D modeling, great for 3D printing, great for 2D art too as well, because um, you really need to understand 3D to do 2D well. Not that you need to understand Blender to use a pencil, but like conceptually, if you're trying to draw a horse and you can only, like you only understand it from a side view, you're not really gonna get a, like you'll, you might get really good at drawing the side view, but you're not gonna get a good understanding of how to draw like horses in any other situation. If you can understand the 3D of the horse, then um, side view, front view, whatever other weird view, you can do it. Um, so it's a conceptual thing. And again, I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong way. I'm just, uh, yeah, I think basically that uh, we, we sort of, humans in general and myself included, tend to think too much about how we think. Um, and this is one of those things. So rather than getting bogged down in that too much, the point was texture projected. I want like grooves like in a conveyor belt so that there's a clear, it's clear that something appears to be moving <laughs> and that the gate itself seems to be walking. So I'll have, so there's two things we have to sync it with when we do this. And syncing it is just a matter of making sure the spacing between like points is good and that the texture is continuous. Um, because here's the two things that you really have to do with it. We've got to sync it with the steps of the arch. So it looks like the arch is not... There, you see a lot of animations where the walk cycle is out of sync with the ground they're on, or the speed they're going, and it either looks like they're flailing their feet madly, like they're on an ice rink about to fall down and their feet are sliding across the ground all the time, or their feet are moving slower than the ground, and it looks like they're just like slowly gliding their foot forward magically. Like, they're taking one step, and the other foot is just grinding along the ground, and you're like, that's going to destroy your shoes, dude. Um, so we don't want either of those. we got to make sure that the pacing matches so that footfalls in, are in locations that make sense. Which is why I don't want to do the crouch, crouch and jump one for this, because it spends a lot of time on the ground. So I would literally have to make the texture... I would have to actually keyframe the texture's movement. It would have to be stagnant when the arch is crouched, and then move when the arch is in the air... And I would have to make sure the pacing of that movement matches the pacing, like those um, the graph editor lines. That way, the at least for the horizontal position of the arch, that way the landing, it's believable as a jump. It's doable, something we should do probably, and not conceptually that difficult, but it is going to take some work. And me animating a separate thing, which without the bones, it's going to be easier. Uh, there's no reason to give the ground a skeleton hear that Elden Ring? You didn't have to give the ground a skeleton. <laughs> ah, they, they always will. Elden Ring's a fun game. But FromSoft and ground skeletons go hand in hand. Wow, they really do. Wolnir, Tomb of the Giants, um, what is it, Godwin? <laughs> Did Dark Souls 2 have a ground skeleton? I remember they had some, like, surface skeletons in kind of like the Hunter's Cops area. I should finish Dark Souls 2 sometime, or like actually properly have a go at it. I I had such a unfun time with it, and it's not. I'm not one of those ones who's here to judge it and say like, oh, it's a failure of a sequel to Dark Souls. Like whatever, different games, different goals. Um, my complaints were just two. I don't care about the world being non-contiguous. You can have weird fantasy stuff, whatever. It's it's not like it's breaking my immersion of the giant fat blob in the castle or windmill. Like the. Um, but the two things that were nasty were the lighting. I consider Dark Souls 2 to be washed out to a nasty degree. A lot of people complained about how gray Dark Souls 3 looked, but I was just happy it had any tone that wasn't, like, watercolor painting that someone has put under the faucet and, like, rubbed with a sponge. Like, Majula should be lovely, and the music is great. I don't think it looks very good. I know that that's a Dark Souls 2 hot take. That's a good way to make enemies on both sides of that argument. <laughs> I don't think Majula looks good. I think it looks washed out. Um, but more importantly, I also found the combat to be frustrating more than fun. And not in the, oh, I can't get past this thing frustrating, although I did a phenomenally stupid against the charioteer. Still haven't beaten it. Mostly because the run-up was so bad that I would, like, psych myself out. And then I'd, like, trap myself in a corner with a skeleton, flail, and then get run over. <laughs> Several times. Really embarrassing, embarrassing show on my part. Um, 
but the run-up was just so nasty. Um, anyway, um, but the big thing was just, like, it felt so... Like, I enjoy slow and methodical combat, but it felt like my character's reaction time was so bad. Um... And, like, everything felt like I needed to not just anticipate, but, like, oh, it, like, I, I could never keep up. Like, even if I anticipated, I couldn't get there. So, it definitely, it's definitely a me problem on that one. Like, obviously, people can beat the game. But, like, I was fighting the turtle shell dudes, and I could never figure out the opening. Like, I never got an opening on them. Like, Dark Souls 1, I figured out timings and stuff really well. Dark Souls 3, I even beat, like, on a much less defensive build, although defensive for Dark Souls 3, I at least used a shield. <laughs> Which, by the way, don't let people shame you out of using shields. They're not as strong in 3 as 1, um, they're, but they're still useful. Um, and, they, they, like, especially with, like, timing and such, there's some attacks where it's a lot easier to block one hit and then roll, or to roll and then block, um, rather than trying to perfectly time two rolls. And it's not bad stamina usage, and it sometimes sets you up better for a second step, second jab. So all those people who are like, oh, you just need to have perfect roll times on everything. I'm like, yeah, but like, there's also other ways. Plus, if you get good at it, you can parry with a shield. And it's another tool in your toolkit. It's not like Bloodborne, where the shield is actually terrible. Um, point being... Dark Souls 2 issues where the combat felt unfun for me personally. I couldn't get in, I couldn't get in the rhythm of it. Um, and then and like the, the attacks were so unsatisfying. Like usually, like in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring, and I don't mean like a gore satisfying, but I mean like the weights of motions and the sounds made sense. Like if a sword hit a shield, it would bounce off in a way that was not like some wild flaily bounce off um unless you're fighting the rock dudes in elden ring in which case it's sort of an indicator of weapon types but like, it's not like every enemy it bounces like if you bounce off at all you're gonna be like staggered almost with your bounce um and if you hit a hit like an entity it doesn't like feel like hitting clay dark souls 2 combat and the sound effects too just felt really off like it's it's either like bounce 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 with wild recoil or it's like sinking into clay and they're both just so not fun. <laughs> for me. For me. Obviously, subjective opinion. How did we get on this topic? Pacing of the jumping gate? I don't know. Dark Souls. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, back to Ishtar to do a little wrap-up. Because I think maybe we will just wrap it for the night. Because um, I'm getting rambly. Um, and I think that we can all agree that maybe a little sleep and a little research would do us some good here. <laughs> Which is what we shall do. <laughs> Um, assuming I stop sniffing into the microphone. I hope y'all can't hear that. I'm not actually sick. I just... The weather's getting cool, and I like cool weather, so I've had my window open, and apparently staying mostly indoors for my job and keeping it closed means I haven't really acclimated to the allergens this year. So my nose is not happy with me. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal. I'm just a little sniffly. Oh, it is so nice these days to be able to actually confidently say that and to not be like... Oh no, it's COVID. Like I'm I'm confident that we're I'm confident that this really is just allergies. I'm vaccinated and all that jazz, of course you ought to be. But like I don't know. Ought to be if you can anyway. Obviously, immunocompromising diseases. Trust me when I say personally I understand. I have been there. But that's not a story for today. Today we're looking at the Archimandius here sinking into the sand. Um so yes, we'll try to match up the textures. Probably not with Pratfall Gate. Definitely with the Walking Gate, because it's consistent. Or the Tiptoe or Sneak. Um, maybe we'll do the other one, too. Uh, we can do the little, like, Jump for Joy one. But it's going to be more, more periodic, and we'll have to keyframe the actual, like... Not even the object, but the motion of the texture. Which should be interesting. Because... <laughs> The, the main reason why I want to specifically move the texture and not the object, because if you can get the texture on here and move it, it's easy. We could just make this long enough and make sure it loops, and it's stupid easy. Um, that's the second thing it has to align with, by the way, from like 20 minutes ago. It has to align with the arches movement, and it also has to end in the like an identical position it starts so that we can make a looping GIF out of this. But the point of that is, 
we could do that really easily where it's just got consistent tick marks and we just sort of move this like pulling a tablecloth out from underneath all the dishes and glassware on it don't try that if you're at thanksgiving not the time um it's a fun trick but do practice on something other than the thanksgiving turkey um but yeah we could do that it's easy or we can try to move the textures and i think that's going to give us an excuse since knock on wood we've been plugging along at an okay pace i think we might have time to mess with the geometry nodes a little bit oh <laughs> and i like me the geometry nodes they're straight up a good time i mean at first glance they're a horrible time i remember the first time i encountered them and heard everyone calling them easy and i talked about this last stream too i was just like what are you talking about these are a nightmare i hate them with a passion i developed like a personal vendetta against the ones in another program an audio based program i hated them um but it was just because i heard people saying they were easy but if you don't understand the concepts behind them then they're not easy and i didn't because no one our teacher didn't bother to explain what anything did um he had an interesting teaching style. Uh, some of it, I, you know, in hindsight, frustrate, it frustrated me, but in hindsight, I'm like, okay, no, I stand by that. That was reasonable. Some of it, I'm like, okay, dude, that, that was just a bad call. <laughs> um, but, you know, is what is. Um, it was, you know, at least an interesting class. I learned some funky conceptual stuff and got to experiment with the game of life a little bit. Not the game, not the board game, but, like, the actual, like, game of life algorithms they're they're surprisingly fun um anyway i think we'll probably wrap it up here with the arch sinking into the desert um so i will see y'all on the flip side i hope and the flip side again is not going to be thursday it is going to be next monday where we'll be back at it with a couple of specific things a i'm gonna look into textures because that's what's really important b i'll actually try to finish the lighting video tutorial from blender guru see if we can't clean this up a little bit because i acknowledge the lighting on the lower surface is too harsh right now and some of the shadows are not ideal um this is still the render i did save this right okay yes i did it was clip one it was clip one so we can escape this and see our little walking dude come on little walking dude yes and he marches onward Dunk. But yeah, no, our text, our uh, our lighting's a little flat right now. It's, I mean, it's probably worse than the jeweler right now. <laughs> Although I don't know, at least this has shadows. Uh, it's off point. I should probably go back to check Majula. It's been like six years, and the music really is awesome. Um, but yeah, I will let y'all get back to your evenings. I will wrap up here. One more work day until I've got a little bit of a break. So I'm looking forward to it. And then hopefully we'll have some good stuff next time. We're going to end this month strong. And then who knows what we'll do for December. If I'm feeling ambitious, well, well I'm not even going to say that. Because it's a real ambitious one. And it's not a good idea to do with one month's worth of planning. Um, another time, perhaps. Although, then again, Twitter's imploding. And who knows what will happen next. So there's no time like the present. But if it's a large-scale project, there's no time like the present to plan it. Um, not necessarily to just do it. So, yeah, we'll do some planning. We'll make sure we set a deadline. We'll, we'll see. Because someday I'd love to actually create merch. Not like merch merch, but like, darn it, I want to make stickers and keychains and for just fun nonsense. As much because I want to decorate my own stuff as anything else, but I think it'd be fun if other, you know, if other people enjoy it and I can make something other people actually like, it'd be fun to share that. Um, maybe go to a convention or something. But again, those are long-term goals. Uh, not happening tomorrow. What is happening tomorrow is a day off, and I hope that y'all have, well, I still have work, but a day off from streaming, and I hope that y'all have an excellent Thanksgiving break if you celebrate that, and if you don't, I hope y'all have a good time, and just good rest of the week, good weekend. Keep the energy going. I know it's Tuesday, it's hard to keep the energy going on a Tuesday, but, like, trust me. Tuesdays, you I, I, Garfield hates Mondays. I think Tuesdays are worse. At least Mondays, you still have the memories of the weekend. Tuesdays, you're lost in the depths of the week. Um, but the point is, you can keep getting through it because you've survived Tuesday already. Um, nearly every part of the... Yeah, pretty much every part of the world is past normal working hours anyway. So, or, like, near enough to it. So, yeah, you've just about gotten through Tuesday. You can make it to the next one. 
So have a good night, y'all. Have a good